think we all know you've got to watch your words these days, haven't you? Sometimes you might say something that's kind of nuanced, and not everyone is going to see the nuance. Like some of the people are going to take it as some kind of firm statement. For example, if I was to say, I quite like a jigsaw, I can hear the difference between that and, I bloody love jigsaws, me. <laughs> but I don't think everyone else can see the difference. Because I grew up in a home of jigsaw lovers. My mum loves a jigsaw. And I do quite like going to my mum's house, finding a partly made jigsaw and having a dabble. That seems to me to be a very pleasant way of wasting a bit of time. But you show me an unopened jigsaw in a box and I can't be asked. <laughs> now, last year, while we were making series two, jigsaws came up in conversation in our office at some point, and I happened to use the phrase, I quite like a jigsaw. <laughs> and ever since then, the entire production team has had me pegged as some kind of weird jigsaw nut. <laughs> So, when this story appeared in the papers, advert appears in East London shop for jigsaw enthusiasts who will complete puzzles for up to £50 each, I had every single one of them egging me on to apply. <laughs> it is a lovely story, I'll give them that, but it's just not for me. Basically, a woman has put an advert in a newsagent's window, offering to pay cash money for you to complete her jigsaws. I have jigsaws that I like, but I don't like making them. <laughs> I am willing to pay £50 per thousand-piece jigsaw to the right person who is willing to complete them. Of course, my favourite bit, no time wasters. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of us are probably asking the same question at this point. It's a question that was raised by someone in the article as well. His name is Adam Bowie, and he is quoted as saying, that's brightened my day no end, and then asking, who in the world likes jigsaws but doesn't like doing them? <laughs> I share your confusion, Adam. I think we all do. This is like someone saying, I like sex, I just don't like doing it. <laughs> I'll pay you £50 to have sex with my wife. <laughs> the way my friends and colleagues went on and on at me about this story isn't the only evidence I have for their strange perception of me as Mr Jigsaw. At the end of the second series, they all gave me a little present. It was, of course, ladies and gentlemen, a jigsaw. This is a jigsaw that they had had made, and they had made the very deliberate choice to not put the image on the box. I spent the whole of our rap party going up to people saying, oh, go on, what's on the jigsaw? Tell me what you've done. And every single one of them was just like, no, you'll have to make it. <laughs> because they bloody know me too well. <laughs> and I cracked. So I spent about three evenings making that 500-piece jigsaw just so I could work out what the ironic, ridiculous present my friends had got me was. And it turned out, ladies and gentlemen, that it was this. <laughs> An Alan Sugar jigsaw. I literally, I literally spent three evenings filling Alan Sugar's face in, and <laughs> that is a sentence I never thought I'd get to say. <laughs> and do you know what? I was surprised by the quality of that jigsaw because they've obviously had this one made by going to one of those printing companies. They've created the image and they've sent it off. And I always assumed that those would be a bit flimsy, a bit fall apart at the edges. But it's not. It's beautifully made. It fits together perfectly. I was really impressed. I was also really impressed by the discovery of a 15% off voucher lurking in the box. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my mum loves a jigsaw. And I love a bargain. <laughs> Do you know what else my mum loves? Tom Jones. Do you know what else I love? Photoshopping pictures of Tom Jones together to make my mum a Tom Jones jigsaw because it's a bargain. That's what else I love. And as you can see, unlike my friends and colleagues, I am not cruel. I put the picture on the box like a proper jigsaw. <laughs> as I wrapped that, I was patting myself on the back. Not literally, I was holding scissors, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Thinking, oh yes, she's going to pick this up, she's going to know it's a jigsaw. But only when she unwraps it will she know exactly how special it really is. And then I unwrapped it. Because curiosity had suddenly got the better of me. Here's what I was thinking. If you owned a company that made bespoke jigsaws for people, how many machines would you have for cutting your jigsaws? Surely what happens is someone emails you a picture, you print it onto some card or whatever, and you put it in the machine and go clunk. And then you get the next one, and go clunk, and then the next one, and go clunk. At what point would you ever stop to think, we'd better change the pattern? Why would you ever feel the need to do that? I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but then maybe I'm right. And I just happened to be in possession of two jigsaws made by the same company. <laughs> now, once that thought is in your head, <laughs> how can you resist? 
I just wanted to see if they were based on the same pattern. So I started with the top left-hand corner from the Tom Jones puzzle there as the top five pieces. And here are the top five pieces from the top of the Alan Sugar Jigsaw. And I don't know about you, but they look pretty darn similar to me. You can put them together in all sorts of combinations. You can swap pieces around, do what you like with them. <laughs> they are exactly the same jigsaw, just with a different picture on them. And all of a sudden, it seems like it probably is worth making Tom Jones after all. So I made the Tom Jones puzzle. So now I've got that puzzle and I've got that puzzle. <laughs> and they are exactly the same cut. <laughs> How could you not? <laughs> so now I've got that puzzle. <laughs> and I've got that puzzle. <laughs> As Tom Jones jigsaws go, that one is unusual. Now, <laughs> this is the puzzle that I'm going to send to my mum for her birthday. <laughs> quite a long way into that before you realise it's an Alan Sugar face in the middle of it. You've got flesh tones, a grizzly beard, curly, tight white hair. It is the perfect face for the job. You're not going to know until you get right to the end. And I want to be there on the day when that happens. <laughs> Meanwhile, that one is going to the local charity shop. 